How's everybody doing? Good morning so far. Great start with Levin and Dunbar. I don't have any good lazy stories, sorry. Um, uh, I'm Clinton Fowler. Uh, like most of you, a bit of a data nerd. I also happen to really like bikes uh, and gummy bears, total random topics. Uh, I work at REI in the strategy and insights team. I've got two objectives at REI. One is to support our leadership uh, to answer their most important strategic decisions. And the second is the partner with IT to ensure we invest in the right analytics solutions to enable our analysts and scientists in the best possible way. So uh, some fun stuff. So today, the topic, IT plus business working together, makes sense for the role, right? Okay. Um, how many people in here work in analytics? Easy one, right? Okay, cool. How many people work in retail? or a retailer or somewhere in the facsimile. Okay, good majority. Um, I feel good to assume you probably know about the Amazon effect then, right? Reasonably large shift in consumer behavior uh, towards digital, towards e-commerce and online purchasing, uh, and particularly important, obviously, uh, to, to retail and, and analytics. Um, to put it in perspective, in 2017, in the first half of this year, We've seen 5,300 stores close, retail stores close. We're on path to somewhere in the, the range of 10,000 stores closing. The worst year previously was 2008 in the Great Recession, where there was 6,200 stores closed. So pretty drastic shift, right? Amazon effect is pretty, pretty amazing um, and particularly important. So how, how do we compete in that, right? One of those answers is analytics. Um, so today, I'll walk through how the business divisions and IT work together at REI and attempt to combat and compete in the world of the Amazon effect. Before I hop in, um, IT and business strengths. On the IT side, it's about production grade delivery of services and technology that empower um, the business, right? enables the business to go make the decisions. So production grade is scale, reliability, security, performance, support. Um, delivering production grade uh, in IT requires an incredible amount of planning, like an intense amount of planning. Um, specifications down to the minutia, an incredible amount of time, and typically the projects we're talking about are taking weeks, months, and even years. Right, millions of dollars, thousands of dollars spent. So particularly important stuff. On the business side, it's about customer execution, efficiency, speed, how do we get to market as fast as possible? How do we actually deliver on those customer needs and the customer wants? Uh, I get the question a lot, well, where's the line at REI? Where's the divide between IT and the business? Uh, IT is responsible in, in our world for all the technology, the technology budget, so all the vendors in the room, you can go talk to the IT guys, I don't own budget. Uh, they own all the budget, they own the processes for that. Uh, on the business side, we own extracting the data from the, inner, the data warehouse, finding the insights and delivering those to the business. Making sure the subject matter experts, the leaders, the managers, all have those insights to be able to go execute. How many, mem how many REI members in the audience today? Wow, nice. Uh, cool. So most of you know we're a little different than the traditional retailer. We're not a corporation. We're a co-op, whereas a corporation's focused on maximizing shareholder value. We've got four things that we think about in most everything we do. First is conservation. Uh, we give almost 70% of our profits back to conservation and preserving the outdoors. Um, so a little bit, a little bit different than the prototypical corporation. We think about members, employees, and business. So pretty broad. Um, and as you can see by this very simple, uh, lovely tableau bar chart, we've done a fairly good job at being a good retailer. We've seen pretty good growth in a dynamic of the, the Amazon effect in, in that marketplace. Um, we're not necessarily amazing in technology all the time though, right? Part of being a great retailer for 78 years is tough. The cool part is, my partners in IT had incredible foresight back in 2013. And it's a piece that I think is a great learning for everybody here. They, they took the foresight and said data is going to be really important. 
and they took every facsimile of the data from the customer perspective, from the operations perspective, and they brought that and put it into an integrated data warehouse, and that's been made available to everybody in the co-op that can write SQL. It's a critical piece. But great foresight. Um, and today, I think there's something like 90 terabytes of data that we're munching through, so pretty good size. Um, but we have a brutal, we had a brutal truth in 2016. While we had the data, we're a great retailer, we lacked the customer insights to make our most important and strategic decisions. Um, and on top of that, we had two problems that are typically near and dear to folks. One is the relationship between IT and the business was relatively strained. Uh, and the next was the data wasn't necessarily formatted in a way where analysts and scientists could actually very rapidly answer questions at the speed of business, right? Um, anybody have that problem? We're getting to the data? Yeah, a few hands. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> neither of these problems are going to be solved by the business alone or IT alone, right? The two have to work together to make this come to life. And in most environments and in most cultures, that's going to be the case. Um, so context, I started at REI in May of 2016 with the brutal truth <laughs> communicated to leadership. Three months into starting that we lacked the consumer insights necessary to make a most important strategic decision. So great time. Um, the, the question was, what was the source of the strain between business and IT? Um, I think some of it is great retailer, not great with technology, and the primary piece was the technologists and the non-technologists having the communication and the, the shared understanding between each other. Yeah. Okay, so to the core of today's talk, a little bit to the how do we, how do we work better together, um, five easy steps. It's not the 10-minute ab workout, folks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's no easy wins here. A lot of this stuff, in, in many ways, will be mundane, but it's fundamental to actually being successful. Um, it takes a ton of effort, it doesn't stop, and there's a ton of trial and error along the way. Um, the only other thing I'll say here, I put five steps, and they're kind of, I used numbers instead of bullet points, because this is the order we've experienced them, and we've gone in, or that I have at REI with my partners in IT. Um, it's not necessarily going to be the case at every culture, right? You're going to need to adapt. You need to look at the context, no different than any analysis, and adapt appropriately. So let's dive in. First and foremost, collaboration in, in helping compete against the Amazon effect. Deliver insights as soon as humanly possible. I can't stress this one enough. Even the simple, small ones. The faster you can get something in front of executors, leaders, managers, your subject matter experts, the better off you're going to be. The huge piece here is you're going to gain credibility. Right? It, there's tons of roadblocks, and we'll talk about what those potential roadblocks are. But you're going to gain credibility the second you can start to deliver insights, even the smallest, smallest insights. Um, so let's talk a little bit about potential roadblocks and a little bit of an insight. An example of a simple insight. People. Obviously, nobody here has that, is in that bucket because you're at the Tableau conference. You're getting the skills necessary, learning modern, modern analytics, different approaches. Um, but a lot of times, some of the challenges are going to be in the people and the skills and the knowledge to extract the data and get the insights. Uh, processes. This one's a little bit of a soapbox for me. Um, you don't want a complete lack of process, and you don't want something that's way too heavy on the process, right? Both those things are bad. But process is really good when it enables you to execute. And the example I use is a, is a sports analogy. Anybody ever seen a world championship team walk out onto the court or onto the field and not have a playbook? Probably be pretty funny to watch the game. Um, that's process, right? They go to practice every week, and so some, some level of process is really important, but the key is to find the right balance. Um, and then the other two, a key piece mentioned in, in the, the beginning, uh, access to data and the data structure, those are ones that can plague. Um, one near and dear to, to my heart is data structure, and anybody here that's used Tableau knows that if, you're if your data is not structured appropriately, it's very difficult to work with. Um, when your data is structured nicely, Tableau becomes amazing. But those are the potential roadblocks that you're going you're to encounter 
when you're trying to deliver insights as soon as humanly possible, um, but you still want to deliver those insights. And these two charts, they're actually our member growth, active members, um, over, or I should say active members, not member growth, but over the last 10 years. Again, great retailer, we've done pretty well. Um, the, the point here is just simple. The first one is like incredibly simple visual, but just delivering that on a regular basis will bring credibility. I can't say what I'm segmenting here as it relates to those active members, but that's just bringing like just another level of complexity and building the simple into the next as you evolve into in delivering those insights. Uh, back to the theme, we have to think about delivering these things, and I would stress how important it is as soon as possible to hit on uh, delivering insights. Question time. How many, here, how many people here have been in a relationship? Okay. Ever critique your partner? <laughs> How'd that go? <laughs> I've done it. It doesn't go well. Um, relationships are important. Productive relationships require positivity, support, encouragement, honesty, right? Those are like foundational to a relationship. So if you're trying to build a relationship between IT and business, probably don't want to criticize them, right? Um, more, a little bit more survey time. Anybody ever complain about IT being too slow? Come on, you're up. Okay. Uh, how, how many IT professionals do we have in the audience? Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> how many of you want your business requirements earlier? <laughs> right? Like, standard stuff. But we critique, like the business critiques IT constantly about, oh, when am I going to get it? It's so slow. And IT is like, I don't have clear business requirements. When am I going to get a clear business requirements? Oh, they keep changing, right? That's not going to help build a productive relationship between IT and the business. So don't criticize. Keep it positive. Stay focused on the strengths. Um, so back to the strengths in the beginning. IT is about production grade. Business is about customer execution. So at REI, we attempt, attempt, not all the time, but we attempt to stay productive and stay focused on our collective strengths. And there's some stuff that we do explicitly, and again, this is where I say it's kind of mundane on one hand, but it's really fundamental. So uh, our IT department is actually about 30 minutes away uh, from our headquarters. Uh, and so I actually have my team and there's some other folks across the analytics, the business analytics divisions that will go and spend one day a week at their office. Our IT team is constantly at our headquarters, and the key is being co-located we're actually able to work closer together and it improves the relationship. The, the moment we started doing that at the beginning of this year, it was an incredible appreciation that just started to work in, and build between the business and the IT teams. We also put in place a monthly IT and business leadership meeting. Um, we reviewed what the priorities were and the progress on all progress uh, reports. That was a huge piece, a little bit to the question earlier. It's like that meeting alone got us to to have communication in a significantly more open way. Uh, and we made decisions, right? Um, weekly project updates, IT team does a, an amazing job of sending those out. Um, business, you, you need to read them. You can't, if you get an, a project, <laughs> project update and you don't read them, but then you say you don't know what's going on, it's because you didn't read the, the project report, right? So you gotta take responsibility in that relationship. Um, collaborative requirement gathering, anybody had the hot potato tossing? You have a request of IT, throw the hot potato over, they catch it, you don't hear from them for a while, and then they throw it back over the fence, but you didn't get what you wanted. Yeah. No hot potato, you gotta do it collaboratively, you gotta work together, you gotta partner, you gotta be together, uh, which goes to the regularly scheduled one-on-ones. So across, whether it's at your highest level all the way down to the individual contributors, you wanna think about how can we actually have one-on-ones? Just pure one-on-ones, what do you do? What's, what's the stuff that you do in the business? What are you doing in IT? What are your pain points? When you can share more, it's better. How's everybody doing? Good? All right. No jumping jacks necessary. Um, I like this quote by uh, Sir Richard Branson. Train people well enough so they can leave. Treat them well enough so they don't want to. Right? Like everybody here probably feels that's pretty good. Um, it goes great for the third step. Evangelize and educate. And there's kind of two aspects here, but 
the foundation is communication is critical. The more you can communicate your actionable insights, share your progress towards the key objectives, the more likely you create organizational support and adoption of those insights. So that goes for both the business side and the IT side. Now it's critical for your leaders, your managers, your subject matter experts, but don't forget about the evangelism and the education with your analytics professionals. So everybody here, right? Like how do you work across your own group, right? Your own kind, if you will. The most important piece here on evangelism and education in an organization and bringing IT and business together is to remember you are the analytics professional. We're all the data nerds, right? Um, your audience is not. So if you look at the marketing team or your merchandising team or whatever operations team, they're not the analytics professional. So that really cool visualization where you did the scatter plot overlaid to something else and like looks awesome, they're probably their eyes are gonna spin, right? You gotta think about how are you actually preparing uh, the insight for them to consume on their terms. <clears throat> to, like, and again, back to the Amazon effect, it's imperative that we do this. Like this one in particular, so imperative to get right, we simply have to make sure our communication is impeccable. Uh, so how do we do that at M R R AI? Uh, two, two different pieces. One analyst side, the other is on more of the, the leaders, managers, and subject matter experts. On the analyst side, uh, contractor support. On my team, we explicitly have, we've got two resources uh, that we bring in, uh, particularly important for us in terms of, there were skill, skill places where I wanted to bolster the, the, the skill on the team and provide a resource where they could go reference at any point. For an education standpoint, it's awesome. Having those, those resources on staff is amazing. Uh, they've helped us a ton. We do lunch and learns. So all the analysts across the various business divisions are invited, and we share work in progress. And the key is work in progress, not done work. Done work is interesting, don't get me wrong. But when you're trying to build some collaboration and education, when you do work in progress, it does two things. People get to contribute to the outcome and feel like there's some ownership in it. Um, and you find out what people are working on, right? Ever have the problem where one team's working on one thing and another team's working on the exact same thing and you had no idea? It happens every now and then at REI. Um, the executives, they, they have one question that they want answered and they ask every single analytics team. So we have seven different groups working on the exact same question. The more we can do our lunch and learns, we, we eliminate that duplication and we do the education piece. Uh, the other one I mentioned up here is the inter enterprise data set collaboration. I won't go into details here, but this is a whole talk on its, on its own. Um, it goes to the pain point that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this slides um, around having it tableau, tableau ready uh, and enabling analysts and scientists uh, to work efficiently. On the leaders, managers, subject matter experts. So again, you guys are the analytics experts. The people you're communicating with are not. Um, and for us, we have, uh, we refer to it as a data literacy challenge, right? Like how do you actually present numbers in a way where they're actually gonna understand what those numbers mean and what they can do about it. Um, key is one-on-one -on -one sessions, enable them to ask the stupid question. Like, hey, what does that really mean to me? Whereas in big group environments, they may not necessarily feel comfortable to do so. Uh, One-to-many reporting the new sessions is a critical one. Um, bring in cross-division folks and just simply say what the numbers are. We do nothing more than just report the news. Went up 1%, down 3%, up 5%, and just say those news. But the key piece is we have five questions that we enter every one of these on a monthly basis, and we ask the organization about those five questions. And they're related to the numbers, but we just pose it to them, and we start the conversation in the room with the intent that the conversation continues outside of the room, that we don't try to solve it in that room. And it's amazing because it just evangelizes what the performance is, and we started a, a conversation inside of the co-op. It's a great way to just evangelize and keep things rolling. Uh, the last one which relates to this missing data, snapshot, 
sorry, I can't present this data. Um, uh, is the leadership evergreen dashboards? And this we've actually just started. Um, the key is on a day, a week, a month, a quarter, a year, everybody that we're creating analytics for, we're creating those dashboards, those reports, are doing things. They're got marketing campaigns running. There's new gear coming in that's being sold. There's a store that's opening, right? They're doing things. And to, to hit on that data literacy piece and to evangelize the performance, if we have dashboards, evergreen dashboards, so they're the same and they're consistent daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually, they can see what they're doing in a day or a week or a month, and they can see how the numbers move. And when you tie those two things together, light bulbs go off. It's amazing how much the light bulbs go off. Um, there's a couple of charts um, that I unfortunately cannot share with you, but like we went down into items per order and showed that during our promotion periods, you can see just these incredible changes because of the, the promotion. And when you show people the chart, just a simple line graph of what happens to items per order during the promotion, and what we've incentivized and how that turned the, and changed the customer behavior, it's amazing. So on the evangelization and education um, with leaders, managers, and subject matter experts, these two things have been particularly uh, helpful for us at REI. Uh, and again, back to Amazon effect. You know, we're gonna see 10,000 retail stores close. We've seen great growth. We have to do this stuff, and we have to do this stuff constantly. It doesn't stop. It's not the, the 10 minute ab workout. We've got to do this stuff pretty regularly. Stack rank your business priorities. So there was a few IT professionals in the room. Um, who, who are the IT professionals? Okay. Do you guys like it when the business asks for an explicit technology solution? <laughs> Nobody likes to be told what to do. <laughs> That's the key. Like, and in building a relationship between IT and business, um, being told what to do, you become unempowered, you don't, you don't build accountability, and life gets pretty boring, right? You don't really wanna show up to work, and then you're out recruiting, anyhow. Um, so for those of you in the business, the key is to focus on your strength, right? What is your strength? Customer execution. Um, provide your IT partners with an idea for what your 12, 24, 36 months roadmap is doesn't need to be perfect, just an idea for the future, right? It's critical because the IT department in most cases is a shared resource. We've got six or seven divisions at REI, and there's one IT division, and they've got everybody asking them the questions. The sooner we give them our requirements or our business priorities, what the things are we want to enable and the capabilities, they can look at it and go, that one, that one, and that one can be solved by this. But if you come to them the day before with a hot potato tossing, throw it over and say, I need that tomorrow, they can't do that. And so the key is to think about how you give the business priorities to them more regularly. And most importantly, stack ranked. Sending somebody, here's the list of 50 things I'd like to see without a stack rank and numbers next to it isn't particularly helpful. Um, crawl, walk, run approach as it relates to business priorities. Everybody loves the shiny red Ferrari. Maybe it's not a shiny red Ferrari for you. Maybe it's a blue one. Maybe it's not a Ferrari and it's a Mercedes Benz. Like everybody wants that amazing supercar or that thing that's just um, like the killer, killer technology. Uh, the reality is very few people can actually drive a Ferrari. <laughs> Just starting it is very difficult. Never mind the first 100 yards of trying to drive it down the street. Um, and so as you think about your business priorities, think about the crawl, walk, run approach about what you can realistically get done, what you can realistically use with the people and the processes and within the norms of your culture. And then here's a good and a bad example. I, I, this is actually one that I made the bad on. And I was, I didn't want to do an advertisement up here. I had asked for a specific product, not a memory management solution. <laughs> it was bad. They, they looked, my, my IT partners looked at me and were like, that's nice, stop telling me how to do my job, right? That one is prescribing what the solution is. The bad example is saying, I want this. 
And I'm the business person, not the IT person. So like, what do I know, right? I'm, I'm asking for explicit technology. On the good side of it, you can read that and you know, it's like, we want to efficiently conduct exploratory analysis on a 100 billion row extract. REI is a retailer, so we have a big data problem and I've got extracts of a billion rows that I want my team to be able to explore through and find insights. Here, I'm asking for a capability, just saying, hey, we need to be able to do this. My team's hitting it first, but the reality is there's a marketing team that's gonna hit that, an operations team that's gonna hit that, retail teams that's gonna hit that. So the more you can focus on stack ranking your, prior, your business priorities and asking for capability, not specific technology, you're gonna build a better relationship with IT. Super, super important. Um, we don't have infinite, you know, we give 70% of our profits back to preserving the outdoors. Um, we don't have the ability to, to not do this in a really, really good way. And I think it's likely true for most businesses where you can't do this if you do competing in the face of the Amazon effect, it's gonna be a rough road, right? Especially in retail climate today. Build a shared analytics roadmap. <clears throat> Again, order is not necessarily important in this, right? On the one through five. Um, it's just how we've gone through it. This is one in particular that can happen as like first step, right? You may be at a point where it um, depends on where you're at in your planning cycle, um, but this one's super, super important. Before we dive in and talk about a shared analytics roadmap, let's talk a little bit about tension. Um, and I promise it's relevant to a shared roadmap. Um, some bright people over at Harvard Business Review uh, wrote an article about the best performing companies and how they adopted and, and took an approach to setting objectives uh, that embraced tension, right? If you had a square and a circle at two ends of the, the spectrum, companies that just went on one end of it versus another end of it performed less efficiently than those that found somewhere in the middle ground, right? They embraced the tension and had those dialogues. And so when you think about building a shared roadmap, how do you embrace tension? Tension's good. Let's see if this works. Okay, see that GIF? Anybody seen Dumb and Dumber? It's like 20 years old now, but that just makes me cringe, <laughs> right? That's tension. Right? Just, he really just goes for it, just embraces the tension of the situation, right? Throws a snowball. It's completely ridiculous, but it's tension. Like, if you, you want that, you feel that cringe. When you're thinking about building an analytics roadmap and you're working between your business and your IT team, you want to embrace that tension. You want to feel that, like, tightening in the stomach in a way, right? Where you're walking in a room and you know that you're going to have tension there. Um, the optimal path to building a... IT and architecture and, and the roadmap on that side is not likely going to match perfectly to the business objectives that you're going to come with. So at REI, our IT team, we've, we've gone through a process this year where they looked out at 2020 and said, what's our most perfect architecture? And then draw it back and said, this is how we would invest. Right? Perfect scenario. They would get everything that they wanted to do. They'd have all the time and the resource, and here's what that looks. And then the business said, hey, here's our business process from 17 out. And then we went in and started to crunch, like, well, we can't wait until 2020 for a DMP, right? We can't wait for an in-memory management solution until uh, 2019, right? And you start to go back and forth and find, not just saying, well, screw it, I'm just gonna do this, or I'm just gonna do this, um, is actually find those tension points. So. Think about how you can uh, embrace the tension and be like Lloyd here, who clearly embraced the tension uh, in that relationship. I don't advise doing that though, back to productive uh, relationships. Um, the other piece here is identifying blind spots. Um, and back to uh, evangelism and education, uh, external resources can be great, um, whether it be external to the company or external to your team. They can be great in terms of bringing a fresh perspective, helping you iterate. Uh, think about wargaming as a tactic, 
right? How can you build it up to make it amazing and then tear it down because it's horrible? And great ways to land on a shared analytics roadmap that everybody can embrace. So, competing against in the world of Amazon effect, deliver insights as soon as possible. Uh, consider your potential roadblocks. So the roadblocks, people, processes, um, access to data, data structures. Build a relationship with IT. Uh, stay focused on your collective strengths. <clears throat> Think about that Brene Brown quote. Think about staying positive. Don't criticize. Um, criticism is just not productive in a relationship, right? Um, even if you still believe IT is slow or the business is constantly changing priorities, it doesn't need to be said, right? Um, evangelize and educate. Think about how are you doing evangelism and education with your analytics divisions, your analytics teams, uh, and how you're doing evangelism and education with your leaders, uh, managers, and subject matter experts. Stack rank your business priorities. Think about a crawl, walk, run approach. Uh, and on the last one, build a shared analytics roadmap. Identify those blind spots. Uh, embrace tension. Know that it's okay. The tension's good. You'll get the best result when you've got the tension in the room. So that's what I have for you today. IT and business equals dividends. When you, get, when you put those pieces together, the end result is significantly more positive than not. Um, we look at it, the more we can tightly integrate between our IT team and our business team, the better our results. Ultimately, we have to do it. It is so incredibly important because in the face of the Amazon effect, where we have, our, you know, we've already seen 5,000 plus stores close in the first half of 2017, the Amazon effect and the change in customer behavior is reasonably significant. And to stay relevant in that space is going to be super, super difficult. And we don't have the ability to not hit on these things in, in, in amazing execution uh, and be great operators. And I will leave you off with, we're a different kind of company uniting our community around shared values. This is a quote from our CEO at REI. Uh, and it, it kind of feels appropriate within this audience. I think the data community is... You know, data nerds, it kind of fits in a similar, similar type community. Um, but obviously, REI approaches it a little bit different, being a, a co-op versus a corporation. So I'll open it up to Q&A, and then don't forget um, to fill out the survey at the end. Questions? Yeah? Yeah, so question was, uh, master data management, where does the responsibility for the data reside? And it's a great question. Um, <clears throat> super, super important piece. It's actually the gray line between IT and the business. So on the IT side, they bring in all the data and they land it in the data warehouse. And they curate it to the point where we know it's gonna be clean data. Um, we have the benefit of 90% of our customers are members, so we have great customer data and it's pretty clean. Um, there is a whole other piece that resu re uh, resides, the responsibility resides within the business, um, which is in our analytical data sets. Um, it's actually where we've had external resources uh, help us out um, in building some of those. But we've built these analytical data sets in the business. When those data sets get mature enough and the use is used across all of the business divisions, IT then takes responsibility for them. And so we've actually had two of those, our foundational customer data sets that were developed in the business on top of the data warehouse that they've now taken uh, ownership for again. So uh, it's the gray area, but we, they basically land the data, curate it, clean it, make sure it's available to us, and then the business is responsible for building the analytics data sets. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, they probably have, my assumption, they probably have other customers, right? So, yep. so how do you align the 
So question, play it back, I think if I get it is, um, IT is a support function, they've got multiple divisions coming and asking questions of them. How do we balance, and, and we're asking for different deliverables, how do we balance across the divisions, what's going there, and then how do we not have them as a subordinate? Uh, the subordinate piece is a little bit easier. Positive relationship, there is no subordinate. Right? When you think about just recognizing collective strength, they play an incredibly critical role. Recognizing that role and going out of your way to recognize it is just a daily thing. Um, positive encouragement goes a long way. Um, on the business side, right? IT, for us, IT's got six or seven divisions that are asking them questions. Um, we, were ha we had the exact problem, um, and we just started to solve this. Um, we've now taken and put together an analytics leadership, business leadership team um, that the, the IT analytics leadership is invited to but is optional on. And we basically say, what are our requests to them? And we stack rank those requests collectively. So <clears throat> my partner, Matthew, in operations, he, we're sitting there and going, what do you have to get done next year? What do you have to get done in two years? What do you have to get done in three years? And we're looking at those things and we're actually making those trade-offs together. Right. It makes a big difference when we actually have those conversations together. I can tell you that we've been doing that meeting. We start. We, were, we said we were going to do it monthly. The first meeting we said we need to do this bi-weekly for a while so we can actually get aligned. Um, we didn't start doing those until August. Um, and for the first half of the year, I can tell you, we constantly ran into that problem. And so that's been our solution so far. Yeah. Question? Yeah. Yeah, what's that process? Yeah. So the question is, uh, for the evergreen dashboards, uh, how does our executive staff and our leaders consume that? Um, I'm being recorded now, so I have to be very careful. No. Um, <clears throat> uh, the, the, there's, the story I have is this, there's an individual within one of our leaders, an amazing leader. He'll show up to QBRs, and he's got a printout of 11 by 17, 30, 30 printouts, he'll get a question from our CEO, he'll go to the 12th one, pull it out, go to the fourth page, point to the number and answer it like that, right? Retail, merchandising in particular, there's some tried and true processes around how they go at it. Um, and so <clears throat> there is an absolute challenge around, we went from the brutal truth, that was the 2016 brutal truth was we needed the customer insights. And this year's is what do we do with those insights most optimally and how do we consume those in the most constructive way. And the process on those dashboards, we have a bi-weekly executive leadership meeting. That dashboard is printed um, and presented as the starting point. Um, that one centers everybody. Like Each of the divisions are bringing in their historical ones, but that's the one that we unify and talk to from the start. I don't know how much you looked at the design of that, but it's a table. Optimally, we wouldn't like, who here really wants it? Anybody that's used Tableau knows that the table is a, a pain in the butt, uh, but it's not the greatest visual. We're using tables explicitly because we're trying to get the adoption, uh, and we put the little the bar charts. We had spark lines, like spark lines were too much. We took the spark lines out. Um, and so um, it's really, it is, we're delivering it in a form where they already had it. We're delivering it on a piece of paper, which is what they're used to. We're putting the visuals on the page to be table, mostly, with a little bit of other stuff to tell a story. 
um, with the goal and desire that it'll come on a weekly email. That explicit one will come in a weekly email. Um, and then it'll come with links to a dashboard where they could actually start to filter. Um, my gut is it's a three, six, nine month endeavor on those evergreen dashboards. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, IT team, I don't know the exact numbers. Um, on the business side, uh, each of the business divisions have an analytics team embedded in them. Um, and they range anywhere from one person to eight people. Um, and I think in total we're give or take around 40, 40 total heads maybe on analytics, depending on who you talk to in the teams. Yeah, so the question is, in developing a 12, 24, 36 month roadmap uh, in, in the face of the Amazon effect, like how can we actually predict, and isn't it just kind of crazy to think about 36 months? Um, a plan just is really, you know, like a roadmap, a plan is intent, right? Our intent is to go there. Um, and I think everybody has the shared understanding that um, you know, in six months we may change that. Uh, we constantly are revisiting, right? So we have an annual process. We have the monthly IT and business leadership meeting um, that goes through what are we working on? Is that the right priority? Um, those meetings, uh, in particular, those monthly ones, are the ones where you're doing the check-in. Are you still work? Are we still working on the thing that matters, right? In some of the critical decisions that get put in there, anybody ever experienced feature creep? Like new requests that come in on projects, yeah. Um, we get a ton of projects that will get defined and then people are like, oh, and I want this. And it's like, mm, is that really the top priority? And so when we look at the 12, 24, 36, it's like that's intent to get there, but we're not set on that, right? We know the reality of it. We've had things that um, in the two years I've been there um, and I've been told it's been going for five or six years where something just keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And it's not to say we don't want that and we don't think it's super important to be successful. It's just that, it is, you're right, it's kind of vaporware, right? It's like, yeah, we, we hope to get that someday, but we're just not there in maturity or capability. So, um, but the key is having that intent, right? If you've, you're more likely to do something that you say you're gonna do. Um, I think there's some stats out there that say it's like you're 60% more likely to do something that if you say it out loud and say it to another person. And so just like thinking in the, those positive terms is how we kind of approach it. Yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the onus ultimately gets put on our IT leadership. Right. So the question was, with <clears throat> all the various divisions, how do you actually end up with that final stack rank? And, and so the business divisions, we're now starting to work together so we can try to give them a, a better stack rank. Um, ultimately, the final say in ownership for technology is the technologist. And so IT really has the final say of, okay, next year, here are the things that we gotta get in the queue. And you still have the opportunity to not be happy about that. Uh, but again, productive relationship. Sometimes you have to agree to disagree and move forward. So, yeah. Other questions? Any more? One more? Yeah. 
um, let me clarify, push back on the business changing a priority? Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the question is, how do you manage uh, the business saying to IT, hey, this is the speed of business. You just got to get it done. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, the role that I get to play is kind of unique in, in working across all of the divisions and trying to coalesce what is the top priorities and work and help and support IT on this. Um, I'll say this, there's times where IT doesn't like me because I'm gonna push on them because like, we need to be able to do exploratory analysis or we can't run that model until we get that R server up. Right? Um, there's other times where I go and have a one-on-one -on -one with my other peers in the business divisions and go, hey, that was really nice of you to ask for that for next week. That's unreasonable, <laughs> right? Like look at collective strength and why didn't you know about that? And you really, you do have to build accountability. And sometimes those messages are hard, um, but when you build that, that relationship over time, you can have that more frank conversation with them. But if you try to have that without doing the relationship building stuff, they're gonna look at you and be like, whatever, right? Yes. Yeah, you don't sit in a meeting with all of your peers and call somebody out, right? It's not gonna be productive, but um, it is important. Like, you gotta, people's feet have to be held to the fire. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it.